Good afternoon and welcome to TVM News. Today is Friday, April 5th. I'm John Downey. And I'm Jacob McLean. Today we have news about 26,000 people losing power in any PA after being soaked with rain this week. We also have news about the Toby Hanna State Park Dam being replaced. And we'll be checking with Taylor Zacharias from The Weather, along with our sports anchor Rachel Zarubsky to find out the latest in the sports world. PennDOT officials say that 102 projects will begin this season in District 4, which covers Lackawanna, Luzerne, Pike, Susquehanna, Wayne, and Wyoming counties. More than $276 million will be invested in the region's infrastructure for bridge work, resurfacing projects, and more. Nearly 100 products, projects will resume this season, including the twin bridges along Interstate 84 in Lackawanna County. PennDOT says while this may be annoying for drivers, these projects are necessary for drivers to look out for crews working. NEPA was soaked with rain this week, and residents <coughs> felt its impact. On Wednesday, communities experienced high winds and rainfall, which closed roads, damaged buildings, and left many without power. Roofs were damaged in Dunmore, trees were knocked down in Clark Summit, and more than 26,000 people lost power in the region. Flood watches were administered for areas close to rivers and creeks. Some higher elevations even experienced winter weather conditions, but none of this unpredictable weather comes as a surprise for NEPA natives who are often used to seeing multiple seasons occurring in a day. People reported that their customers' power was restored around 10.30 p.m. Wednesday night. Toby Hanna State Park is known for getting people outdoors and on the lake. This upcoming summer will be the last on the water for a while. The state recently announced plans for a full dam replacement project. The current dam was built in 1950 and is starting to deteriorate. In order for this project to move forward, the state has to drain the lake before it can be rebuilt for modern standards. After many reports of strong odors coming from a local dump, the PA Department of en Environmental Protection issued a nearly 600,000 penalty fine against the Keystone Sanitary Landfill, the largest civil penalty issued by de the department within the last 10 years. However, the smell has been a problem for the past 40 years. This fine was put in place to hold the landfill accountable for its failures regarding odor control and prevention, gas control, air pollution, and not keeping things clean and checked as they should. After the landfill pays the penalty, the money will be split between the Department of Dunmore and Troop. The boroughs will be required to put that money toward environmental projects, Friends of Lackawanna, a nonprofit working to protect the health of Lackawanna County. I feel the violations are a step in the right direction, but environmentally not the end of the fight. The department will continue keeping a close watch on the Keystone Sanitary, sanitary Landfill to ensure it meets the agreed upon terms and will enforce further penalties if the landfill f f fails to meet them. Coming up next, we'll tell you about the solar eclipse that is coming for this Monday, April 8th. But first, we'll send it to Anthony Galco in Newton Township. Around 4.20 a.m. on April 1st, on, hundreds of residents were awakened to a mysterious sound that came from the sky. They were surprised that they weren't woken up by the crowing of the roosters at the break of dawn. Many ran out of their barn doors to find an unidentified flying object right in the middle of their backyard. This is Anthony Gagel reporting live from Newton Township, oh, where okay. reporting I UFO Sunday has been seen <laughs> the past two weeks. Let's go interview some people <laughs> who have been affected by this sighting. Sure, what is your name? Corey. <laughs> and what are your thoughts about the possible UFO sightings? Oh, well, I heard someone else ask me about it. You know what I said? I said maybe. Do you like, like, like music? Oh, I'm a I'm a big music fan. If you can't tell. Sure. Oh, I love these videos. You have to do a song to listen to? No, it's got to be the UFO sighting. UFO sighting. Corey, what UFO sighting? What? Something about UFO sighting? Oh, I think last night. Yeah, so I saw this gray object in the sky, about 25 inches or something. I really don't know, man. I saw some green figures in there. Very weird last night. I don't know what's going on, bro. Oh, yeah. It was about 25 inches long. Had some green fingers coming out of it. Uh, that's all I saw. Did they take anything from you? They took my damn cow, Sally. That was a great cow. One of the best in the world. Got me some milk. Got me some good stuff. Got me a lot of money. And uh, it's going to be a tough thing in the office because my wife doesn't have milk for cereal this morning. And what about the cow? Cow? Corey? What? He's talking about some cow. What do you know about that? I don't know. Ask Chet. Chet? So basically this cow is gone now. Uh, my great great pal Sally. I don't think there's going to be any milk for breakfast this morning. I'm not going to have any milk for my honeycombs. Nah, I'm sorry. Thank you. What's your name, ma'am? Uh, my name's Topango. Thank you. What is your favorite Spice Girl? The one that's on those contestant shows. Uh, Mel, Mel C. I think her name Mel, is. Mel B. Mel B. 
B, C, same thing. Do you think the rain's from the UFO? The rain? Possibly. I don't know. These aliens are from outer planets. They might be just pouring on us. I don't freaking know what they do, man. It's just some alien stuff. It could be. I don't know. All right, thank you. And what's your name, sir? My name is Chet. Right, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Chet, there's a hurricane. We what gotta get out of here. Get out of for TV Maywood, this is Anthony Gago with Pawn Life and New Township. Have a good day. I'm an actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. One of the year's most anticipated celestial events, a total solar eclipse, will put on a show April 8th. A total solar eclipse occurs when the moon pauses Earth and the, between Earth and the sun, completely blocking the sun's face, causing the golden orb to temporarily disappear. This event will be visible to millions and will last between three to four minutes, according to NASA. Over 100,000 salmon hit the water running after a truck carrying the fish overturned in northeast Oregon last Friday. The truck tumbled, coming around a sharp turn and landed next to a creek where most of the fish swam away. Thankfully, the driver walked away from the accident with minor injuries. More than 20, 25,000 did not survive, but about 77,000 safely made it into Looking Glass Creek, a tributary of the Grande Ronde River. The Looking Glass Hatchery, located about 300 miles east of Portland, is one of the 33 hatcheries in Oregon, which harvests stocks of salmon to be used for the food or sport fishing. The remains of a ship that sank over 100 years ago has been discovered off the shores of western Michigan. The Michigan Shipwreck Research Association announced a discovery on March 23rd in Holland, Michigan. A group of experts from the organization uncovered a wreck of a remarkably intact steamship, Milwaukee which sank in July 1886 after colliding with another ship. Spring weather said April Fools too much of New England after a nor'easter slammed the region with snow, totals as much as 18 inches yesterday. More than 330,000 customers are without power in Maine, and another 160,000 have lost power in New Hampshire. This is the same storm system that doused lower regions with heavy rains and high winds. Winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories remained in effect Thursday afternoon in parts of upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, while coastal flooding continued to threaten the mid-Atlantic. Up next on TVM, we got some news, some Marywood news, then Taylor Zacharias will update us on the upcoming weather, but now we'll send it to Faith Givens for an up important update. Breaking off. news. Yes. Every Killer time I see Anthony a Galco like, is in critical condition after being attacked. He is being transported to Marywood University Learning Commons to receive medical <laughs> attention. <laughs> like that tripped me up. It was because So it was you Faith weren't on giving. site when Mr. Galco was attacked. How why are you here? I heard there was free catering and I had to check it out. I also heard there was a news crew, so that's exciting. Is this your first time on the news? <laughs> it is now. Hey, Mom. Uh, what did you see happen? I'm not quite sure. I was not conscious by my wife, so I don't really know what happened. But I heard the news hot on my horse and went down here instantly. I think it's doing well. I think she had a common cold or something. Why did your wife beat you unconscious? Well, see, I had this cow named Sally. She got taken by a UFO, so, and uh, I didn't get the milk that morning, and she just beat me up. I don't know what happened, though. What did the UFO look like? It was about 25 inches in the sky, I got to say. Pretty gray. I think saw some like, like green figures in there. I'm not really sure. I was it was like 4:20 a.m. So I don't know what happened. I have to sleep. Did you hear about the UFO sighting? Uh, I did not. I heard it took a cow though. You know, 
that's explains why one ended up in my backyard. Named her, named me Sally. Apparently, made me some good milk with my honeycombs this morning. I know someone who would be very upset <laughs> that she didn't get milk with her honeycombs. We're here at Marywood University LC with Mr. Galco. Mr. Galco, how are you feeling? What's your favorite member of One Direction? Harry. How soon is your recovery process? Okay, that's it for Mr. Galco. For TV Marywood, this is Faith signing off from Newton Township. I'm an actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. Welcome back to TVM News. Marywood's theater department will be performing Little Red Riding Hood for local elementary students at the Sete Levergata Center for Performing Arts on Thursday and Friday, April 4th and 5th. This is their second annual children's theater after last year, which was the first in several years. This year's show is about the classic fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood, a young girl who journeys through the woods to her grandmother's house along the way. She comes across many forest animal friends who help her stay safe from the big bad wolf and his friend, the sly fox. This year's show is not only directed by Dr. Laura Hauser, but also written by her. They will also be holding a public performance on Saturday at noon. Tickets are free for Marywood students and $7 for the public. Children's theater is fun for all ages, whether you are young or young at heart. Marywood will also be hosting the Out of Darkness Walk this weekend on Sunday, April 7th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Art Field. The Out of Darkness Walk is a walk to end the stigma of suicide and mental health. We will be walking to remember those we have lost to suicide, but also walking to remember nobody has to fight alone. There will be raffle baskets along with freebies. Snacks and water will be provided. Let's see what's in the forecast for the upcoming week. Over to you, Tyler. Thank you. Now for this week's forecast. Today, the high is 44 and the low is 37 and cloudy. Saturday through Friday, it will be mid 40s to high 60s. This week, it is cloudy with some sun coming in on Sunday. On Thursday, the rain comes in and stays for Friday. When we come back, we will check in with Rachel to find out the latest in Marywood and professional sports. I'm an actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. The Philadelphia 76ers gained a big boost this week, but an even bigger return could help the Marywood Pacers women's basketball team thrive for the future. After a report came out about a national search for the new women's basketball coach at Marywood, the team has found its new leader on Tuesday. Marywood University's Director of Athletics and Recreations, Andrew Smith, announced that the void has been filled by a familiar face. Tara Machoko will return to the Pacers head coaching job. Machoko served as head coach for the Marywood Pacers for 14 seasons, collecting 206 wins. She was most recently serving Wilkes University's women's basketball head coach and will hope to ter help turn around a program which has failed to produce a winning season since her departure. The Marywood men's golf team finished second out of nine teams on Tuesday, missing the top spot by just two strokes. Zachary Valinsky was the Pacers' leader, finishing tied for third, shooting eight over par, while Paul Apolt, Colin Verkitis, and Ben Galco all finished within the top 20. Plenty of Pacers were named as Athletic East Conference Athletes of the Week. Starting with tennis, Faith Kendricks and David Shemidlin both brought home the award. For track and field, Abby McGoats and Bryce Ryder earned Athlete of the Week while Casey Nochetti earned Field Athlete of the Week. Jenna Scalda earned Defensive Player of the Week for Women's Lacrosse, while Nick Erickson was awarded AEC Player of the Week for Men's Lacrosse. Last but certainly not least, Nick Notari earned Pitcher of the Week after tossing a complete game in his start against Newman University. After an eight-week hiatus nursing an injury to his meniscus, Joel Embid returned to the Sixers lineup Tuesday night, producing 
four points, six rebounds, and seven assists en route to a Philadelphia victory over the Oklahoma City Thunder 109-105 to in Embiid's absence. The Sixers have sank in the Eastern Conference standings, currently sitting as a play-in team, but the return for the reigning MVP might be the boost that Philly needs to make a playoff run staying on the hardwood. March Madness is drawing to a close, with both the men's and women's tournaments waiting for the Final Four to start tomorrow. For the men's tournament, the defending champion Yukon Huskies look to stifle the high-powered offense of the Alabama Crimson Tide, while the Cinderella NC State Wolf Pack hope the clock doesn't strike midnight against the Purdue Boilmakers, led by Zach Eddy. As for the women's tournament, the undefeated South Carolina Carolina Gamecocks look to stay unbeaten as the, they play NC State. While Paige Bayoukers looks to end Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes run. Though they are coming off a big winning against the LCU Tigers. That's all for sports. TVM News will return after these messages. an actor in an ad that was given 12 seconds to remind you that if you're high, just don't drive. Because if you feel different, you drive different. It's illegal to drive high everywhere anyway. School bus driver in Louisville, Kentucky, Larry Ferris Jr., who is known for always doing whatever is needed, is now touching hearts after an act of kindness. Ferris Jr. noticed that one of the children on his bus, a little boy, Levi, was having a difficult morning, and that was because he didn't have any pajamas for pajama day. So Ferris went to the store and bought Levi pajamas and brought them to him. Levi couldn't believe it and was overjoyed with excitement. Ferris Jr., normally a bus driver, saved the day. What a guy, I feel like that was a very nice act of kindness. That really was, Jake. I mean, especially now in the world with all like the bad things that happen, you always love to see someone come out like that and yeah. just be a good guy. Yeah, there's still people that are good in this world. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's gonna do it for this week's edition of TVM News. From everyone at TV Marywood, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to follow TV Marywood's YouTube page and like the TVM Instagram page to stay up to date on the latest happenings and to watch additional content. I'm Jacob McLean. And I'm John Downey.